We all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust and to be trusted. We all despise control and desire freedom. We, we are all, all united. united. Uh, let's start from uh, Mr. Uh, Janusz Cieszyński, from the governmental level, governmental point of view. Uh, what are the biggest challenges uh, for turning the smart cities idea into reality from the perspective of the Minister of Design and whole government, because smart cities not only uh, uh, your ministry, but uh, general across uh, almost uh, whole government? I would have to say that it is the cities themselves uh, and uh, their will to develop these solutions and uh, I think some kind of vision uh, on the local government level that it's important to uh, when you are a city to be a smart city in 2020s uh, and uh, I think that this is the most important factor because when we look across local governments uh, in Poland we see that if they want to do something they will find the means to do it and uh, if so, if they uh, so if they start wanting to do smart cities, then we'll have smart cities. And I don't think that there's much that the government uh, can do about this, apart from maybe some uh, legislative things that will make uh, services for the people, for the public, being available online. That that's for sure. We're working on that uh, all the time, and we want to adapt this, the law to uh, what uh, people want to do, that's sure. But uh, I'm 100% positive that you can, in the legal framework that's here in Poland at the moment, you can implement a lot of smart city solutions. And they are being implemented as we speak. So if anyone says that that's a real problem, that you can't do it, then... I'll just tell them, okay, so go to these cities and see how it works. Because uh, I think that uh, too little, uh, too little uh, local governments recognize that uh, smart cities are, uh, first of all, budget smart, which means that they can bring significant savings to, uh, to the local governments, uh, savings on uh, electricity, savings on uh, the administrative spending. And I think that uh, there is no real, there's no real uh, barrier at the moment that would stop anyone from implementing smart cities. And uh, I would like to be at a point where the local governments come at us and say, okay, so we need this, 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 and this to do smart cities. At the moment, the only thing I can imagine is they will say, we need money from the government to do that. And well, of course, that's an option. And uh, we're financing more and more uh, programs that have a digital component. And of course, it will be very good if um, the local governments, the municipalities would go for the smart cities. But I don't think that it's the government's role to uh show them the exact way because the local governments know what their citizens want and i think that they should be given the chance to make it happen you mentioned uh, many times about local governments it's, of course it's crucial for the uh, future of smart cities but in your opinion how to build this cooperation between government and local administration uh, how to explain uh, local local administration that smart cities is a, a, a good uh, solution for uh, for administration for for, for citizens uh, what's the role of government in building this this cooperation very little role if you're only money Mostly, yes. And uh, even that, I believe, is not a very big issue because, of course, I mean, for a complex smart city project, that's obviously going to cost a lot. But uh, I, I think that you can do uh, small projects and then evaluate them and innovate and think of uh, how you can engage local companies and what you want to do. Uh, and it's just uh, a matter of uh, conviction determination on the local government side. I, I have spoken to many mayors, many uh, heads of uh, municipalities uh, that said, okay, so I am a mayor of a 25,000 uh, inhabitant town. And 
if I want my town to still be on the map, I have to invest in good education based on uh, new technologies. I have to in invest in internet access. I have to help uh, uh, the operators to build uh, in uh, internet connections for my people. And they understand that. And uh, when they see that there are savings uh, there to happen, thanks to using smart cities, I believe that they will go for it. And uh, I also think that if we try to, if we over push local governments, it will give a 180 degree difference result than we thought, because uh, I know for a fact that uh, the mayors are very independent and they don't want the government telling them what to do. And uh, the only moment when they accept being told what to do is when a lot of money goes after that. And I think that we should start from small projects that every local government can fund on its own. Thank you very much. I will come back to you with um, some extra uh, question, but uh, now uh, let's focus on a uh, business point of view. And I have a question to uh, Isabella. Uh, if you were to name the key challenges from the business point of view uh, for the smart cities development, uh, what, you, uh, what would that be? Yeah, so quite interesting, and I would agree with the minister in a couple of points, but coming to that in a second. Now, I think the first point where the challenge starts is that there is really not one unified and, and global um, definition of smart cities. If you look at that one, you look at the studies, you have tons of those ones, and these are, to the point, to the earlier point, also very complex undertakings. And with that, this complexity comes the question for the cities, where do I start? I can go that big, I can get, get that small when it comes to the scope of smart cities. The second one is, um, that comes with it, the complexity is on one hand side, on the other side, the cities have their daily business, to go through, but they also have, on the other hand, to make sure that they go into the renewal of infrastructure, that they make the cities they, they every, every day uh, smarter. And that involves resources on both ends, whether it's money, whether it's people. And that's also to a very, very um, big part, a, a constraint that defines the cities. When we look at what prerequisites are there, and we, we looked at on a global basis, and by the way, in, in some parts, when we look at Asia, those cities are pretty ahead when it comes to the renewal of the infrastructure, but we are now also seeing the movement very much coming up over here. But when we look at the prerequisites, it is the question of the skill sets. Does the cities have the technology skill sets to make sure that they can innovate with the latest technologies? That's one part. The second is, is the experience around? Um, and, and what is their, their understanding and the capacity of taking the risk of, of innovating and making sure that they can pretty early understand how to get to the innovation and how to measure the innovation power that they are bringing to the table. And the final one I would say, which we see arising, but still is a challenge is the, the availability of, uh, of open data. Um, open data is important. Many organizations are capturing data, but it, it should be more and more used um, to, to solve the real problems of the communities. Thank you very much. Uh, but can you provide us with some concrete examples um, how cities manage to improve quality of life mm -hmm. uh, their citizens um, uh, by using uh, new technologies? Um, for example, if I go straight to the open data sets, um, one of the examples is again, um, as I said, we see that more and more coming up, that open data and sets, open data sets are made available for an analysis and for further use. And this is encouraging by default the communities to innovate themselves, to take an active part in the innovation and to drive innovative solutions and applications. And one um, example that I would like to raise here is um, uh, the Transport for London. Transport for London has made their transportation data sets. They gave open access to those ones. And by giving the access, they have energized a really, really large crowd of developers. Those developers have up to date developed 
600 applications on top of the data sets that are addressing the need of the London commuters. And you can think about applications such as getting real time um, information about the traffic or getting, um, getting access to charging points for zero carbon enabled vehicles. So I think exactly the point of open data sets and using the power of crowd, using the technology, providing a cloud platform in this case, um, on bringing the data on the cloud platform has significantly raised the, um, the, the, the level of innovation for, for city, for, for transport for London. Thank you very much. In all these issues, uh, I think that the crucial uh, is trust uh, between citizens and local authorities, local authorities and government, of course, but uh, let's uh, focus about trust uh, in local uh, uh, level. Um, and I have a question to Mr. Dariusz Rogowski. Uh, <clears throat> what is the role of independent security assessment laboratories in building this trust in IT products and their security features? Uh, in the context of their application in smart uh, smart cities yeah uh, while building smart cities uh, it's very important to uh, protect uh, assets uh, public and private assets of citizens and uh, of course uh, the residents of smart cities they want their uh, solutions smart solution they use in everyday life, uh, lives uh, to be protected and they want to trust them and how to build this trust this is a question and uh, uh, we have answer uh, to this uh, one of the possible paradox because we can define here in this panel another paradox saying that uh, the most stringent uh, security measures we impose on people in residence uh, the less likely is the same very people will obey these stringent rules so for three years now, here in Katowice, as a part of Łukasiewicz Research Network, governmental organization, this is a research network, uh, I must say, that is the third biggest in Europe. Uh, here in Katowice, we have uh, conducted a scientific and research project whose goal was to uh, set up a laboratory to uh, certificate and evaluate uh, IT products according to uh, security criteria. Uh, security criteria uh, according to common criteria standard and uh, according to uh, to the Cybersecurity Act and um, European Cybersecurity uh, Framework, uh, which is to be established in Europe in uh, in in a short time. So, uh, very important thing is to independently and impartially assess if our smart solutions. Uh, deliver enough security to our assets and how we do them in, in our IT security evaluation laboratory. First of all, we made testing and vulnerability analysis of such solutions. Uh, in this way, we can check if potential vulnerabilities of these products can be uh, exploited by attackers. Uh, this evaluation can be done in different security assurance levels. What does it mean? It means that uh, the higher level is of this evaluation, the more stringent requirements we put during the evaluation process. And uh, the more this product and security controls implemented in those products uh, can be trusted by those users. And there are many products that can be evaluated according to this common criteria standard. Among them are, for instance, uh, components of smart grids like smart meters, energy meters, uh, can be, of course, uh, Internet of Things devices, uh, components of industrial control systems, um, control units of uh, vehicles. Yeah, so there are plenty. Of, of products, for instance, uh, software, mobile applications, web applications that are used very often in administration. So we can deliver uh, through this independent and impartial evaluation in our lab here in Kantovice assurance to those products and to citizens that every time they use these solutions, uh, data can't be breached. Yeah, and this is one of the uh, 
uh, solutions. This is one of the attitude, how to solve this uh, very important uh, issue. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, one more question to Janusz Cieszyński about the cybersecurity uh, in your opinion. Uh, uh, Polish local um, uh, authorities are ready for smart cities if we are talking about cybersecurity? Um, when it comes to cybersecurity, I, uh, we're just in the uh, at the beginning of a process that we have started in the government, which is to actually provide funds for every local government in Poland, every municipality to uh, invest in a cybersecurity audit that will help them to diagnose if everything is okay and if, if not then what should be done uh, but that's uh, that's just one thing and I, I think that the it's hard to believe that the local governments themselves will uh, develop these smart city solutions I think that they will just buy them and uh, it's important that we uh, think that uh, that we when we buy the solutions, we think about uh, their cybersecurity as well. And of course, this, this will be a bigger and bigger issue. Although if I was to say where a cyber attack would happen, I wouldn't say that it would be the smart cities. I would say it would be the existing infrastructure. Uh, it wouldn't be smart city solutions. It would be the existing infrastructure of uh, cities. And one, one more comment, uh, because we, we seem to think that there has to be uh, this big uh, technological awareness necessary within the local government to successfully deliver smart cities. I have to disagree with that because when many municipalities are owners of waterworks, of, of uh, heating plants, uh, of very sophisticated infrastructure, and the, the, the mayor does not need to know anything about that because it's, well, you know, it's not interesting for him. And what they look at is, uh, uh, is the goal. And I think that a good smart city solution, like for instance, the public transport, which is very easy to explain. I mean, you, you give out the data so anyone can access it. And when you give the data uh, accessible to the public, you get, 600 use cases, yes, very, very short time. And it's the same with smart cities. The people uh, who are in charge, they, they are usually very well aware of what their citizens need or what they need. For instance, uh, smart meters. Why, why would they want to do smart metering? Because it's expensive to have someone go around and check the meters. And that's very easy to understand. And you don't have to be, you don't have to understand any kind of technology that stands behind it. You just have to understand the need and, and, and the, the, the simple calculation that is going to save you two or three, uh, two or three uh, people that you have on the payroll. And that's, so I, I think that good smart city solutions like any other digital solution are ones that are easy to explain to the public and if you can't explain it in two sentences to the citizen or the mayor then well you should work on the sales pitch thank you very much <clears throat> i'm afraid that in a public discussion about smart cities there is uh, one thing that uh, smart cities is a uh, big cities uh, so i have next question to uh, mr shimon chupa uh, are smart city solutions only for metropolises uh, can medium and maybe small cities benefit from the transformation into a smart city uh, <clears throat> thank you uh, i think it's worth saying that um, that cities regardless of their size uh, both large ones uh, uh, as well as medium and smaller uh, ones today face a similar challenges so uh, for example the consequences of climate change quality of environment uh, population migration for example, in Poland, uh, it's out, outflow of young and talented residents to, to several uh, large uh, cities in, Pol uh, in Poland. So uh, other um, uh, moving to suburbs um, in other countries, it may be a dynamic increase of number of inhabitants. Um, other challenges, uh, public transport, as, as you said, uh, or effective sustainable mobility. Uh, improve uh, energy efficiency, manage and develop uh, infra municipal infrastructure, but also special management, uh, urban planning is a huge issue, which affects other areas. 
and um, also digital transformation. We, we, we are talking about it, it's a huge uh, chance, but it's also um, a challenge to, to make it properly, I think. So all these challenges uh, affect on quality of lives and uh, in cities, uh, and all these challenges require uh, the use of smart solutions in, in all um, cities. Uh, I think also that cities must have uh, must change uh, the way they uh, operate to, uh, to match uh, much more integrated manner. Um, now, usually, uh, they are working in traditional operation model with uh, silos, the lack of cooperation and data exchange between departments. Um, and I think the, the huge challenge in all cities, uh, also these medium-sized cities, uh, is um, transformation uh, to a smart integrated model of management, uh, where uh, urban services are focused uh, on improving the life quality, uh, service management and current business management and, and management of technology and digital re resources are integrated uh, based on opening the city data. Uh, and uh, building cooperation between city units, but also with involvement of local community. So um, I think in this, uh, this um, model, cities have ability to effective respond to these uh, conditions, to these uh, challenges, uh, I said, and build, can build innovative services uh, and products based on open data, like London, but we have also examples in smaller cities in Poland where um, very interesting uh, applications and, and benefits um, uh, are based on uh, open city data like uh, Rzeszów, uh, Kielc, Warsaw and, and other cities. So um, I believe that, um, that uh, such integrated model and smart city solutions can and even should uh, be implemented in medium-sized cities and smaller ones. Um, I think also that uh, these uh, kind of cities are more determined to, to change uh, and implement new solutions uh, there are more agile, uh, have better cooperation with residents uh, and uh, shorter decision path. It's very, uh, it's very important. Um, so I think the smaller cities sh should and take uh, uh, and uh, should take advantage uh, to the smart sol smart solutions. And uh, sometimes um, they are, they are more effective uh, in it than bigger ones. So I think they have just to identify their needs, uh, expect benefits, and and act. Uh, with cooperation with with um, other stakeholders so um, um, the huge uh, challenge is also uh, uh, education of of cities and it's i think worth mentioning uh, about initiatives that uh, that are implemented in poland uh, in in this field um, of awareness uh, of, of uh, digital transformation uh, of cities for example a local development program supported by uh, association of polish cities or uh, pfr for cities program organized by the polish development fund it's very important to uh, to our cities uh, in, in this field thank you very much uh, but i think that uh, in whole our discussion about uh, uh, digital transformation of uh, uh, cities uh, into a smart city uh, there's a very very important the most important part of this transformation is citizens. So uh, I have a question to Przemek. Uh, in your opinion, uh, can smart cities happen without smart citizens? Uh, what is the role of um, grassroots initiative um, or uh, uh, other community buildings uh, um, campaign to help uh, local authorities build a smart city uh, in this digital transformation of, uh, of local administration in Poland? Uh, so thank you for the question. At the very beginning, maybe I'll briefly tell you what we are doing as a Planet Hero. So we build the concept of the platform, the internet, that is extremely simple on the one side, but it's very complex at the same time. So uh, what we are doing is we try to encourage people to go from the online to offline. So we organize the cleanup events. We try to change the attitude of the citizens to the public space by and involving them uh, in the simple cleanup activities and we do it on the massive scale so the platform started like a year ago we operating in 140 countries uh, and uh, like for example in poland we we made like few thousands of cleanup events this year this pandemic year what was quite hard and um, the the beauty or the simplicity of this project is that we try to motivate the people by guarantee them the financial support. So uh, 
in every country when you operate with the partner, we guarantee that the, uh, that we pay uh, for for the organization for the for the NGOs or for by the user by by themselves five euros for every bag of trash is collected from the public space, and this is guaranteed by the partners. And uh, as we find out, this is kind of great motivation, and it changes the attitude, and it gives the very local communities the tool the simple tool because they now they can have a space to to show they they work they uh, they can meet they can organize by the platform a and 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 they have the motivation to do something and it works completely different in the different part of the world so in europe for example like users in 90 percent of the support is transferred to the ngos in africa where we operate because we are also the member of the uh, United Nations Habitat Program and Waste Waste City Campaign, and we work with the cities in Africa. And the motivation, the financial motivation, then is is very crucial. So, so we try to work with the citizens on the on the very low level, uh, and and get, gathering them in the groups of few like ten people or, or not not so many people, but working on the very local level. And the other thing is. Um, why why our like platform is, is is the concept of the smart cities because we touch very uh, very few aspects of of the of the smart city concept itself because uh, we also collect the data uh, and together with our partner uh, aws uh, we because the thing is that when users publish the project on our platform, they have to document the project by the by the pictures, and the picture cannot be modified. So we have the uh, picture of polluted um, place before the action, after the action. We have the proof that the trashes were disposed and so on. So normally, every every cleanup event is is supported by ten pictures, and we have the thousands of pictures from all over the world, and we analyze them by the type of trashes and the type of producers, and um, knowing when the picture was made, uh, where it was made, and what type of trash we have, then we can like predict the problems or, or patterns of, 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 of pollution in the in the common space. And this is this is like what we are doing in, in the terms of, of, of smart city. But um, yeah, as I said, like what we are doing, we are trying to encourage people to get out from the from the you know safety or, or, or safety space and do something. So our like um, our approach to the smart smart city is taking people from online to offline and to 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 take an action. Thank you very much. Uh, I will back to you uh, with some extra question. But uh, now let's back to big business uh, uh, point of view on smart cities. We have uh, on the market a lot of solutions for um, local administration for smart cities. Um, for example, cloud services, uh, of course, is um, one of the most important, I think, uh, right now. But in your opinion, uh, what to do uh, to help uh, administration to use these, uh, these solutions? Uh, what to do, how to explain them, why they should uh, use these uh, solutions right now, because uh, I feel that it's not a mystery uh, in Poland, cloud services in local administration is rather not so popular uh, right now, uh, and uh, it should be. Uh, so what we should do to change the situation? I think that we need to raise the awareness. I need that we need to educate, not about specific, but about the power of cloud in general. And also point out and bring to the absolute forefront the benefits that are raising out of exactly using, using this type of technology. Now, one of those things is the minister has already alluded to the, to the fact that it is also a question of resources and we spoke about that as well um, and the and using the the cloud means that that cities in all sizes can offload from keeping the lights on so keeping their resources running into the innovation space i think this is a really strong argument for cities because as already mentioned, the, the environment is constrained and being able to invest more into the core service 
which is looking after the well-being of the citizen, of the society, building the resilience, building the sustainability of the cities is an important fact and is an important shift. I think that the overall education part and education sounds like it's a one way. It's a dialogue. It's a discussion about the new technologies and it's also the ability to bring different groups of people to that knowledge. Um, we, for example, have committed to train 29 million people worldwide until 2025, regardless of their background. They may have technology, they may have any other background in those technical skills, in the understanding of the power of cloud. It also means bringing um, those capabilities and those, um, and, and those technologies into NGOs, into a broad community, giving them the opportunity to the opportunity to experiment, but also bringing that into academia to make sure that that the next workforce is educated and we are doing a lot of different initiatives there as well also in poland where we have specific programs and about 10 universities have already subscribed and we are providing services also there so i think it is about awareness it is about bringing that into the open discussion and it also about understanding the capabilities and the power thank you very much um Mr. Uh, Shimon, I have a question, maybe more general right now, about digital transformation of Polish cities. Uh, where are we now uh, in this process of uh, digital trans transformation in Poland, in local administration? Uh, and in your opinion, uh, what we must do uh, uh, to uh, effectively uh, use uh, potential technologies, potential services, uh, solutions, in uh, in cities uh, to change um, the reality of our uh, Polish cities into uh, absolutely uh, smart cities. Mm -hmm. uh, first of uh, first of all, I think that uh, that we can all agree that that uh, digital transformation of cities, including the provision of fast information flow, uh, with using, for example, uh, cloud and efficient access to data, effective processing uh, of, of its data analysis are the key urban competencies of, uh, of these days. So cities are more in Poland, cities are more and more uh, aware of this. Um, the process of, 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 of digital transformation was, uh, of course, accelerated by uh, pandemic and the uh, need to find ourselves in the new situation with, uh, with uh, um, need of management, communication in on, only in digital way, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but also uh, in the field of um, support uh, decision making. So we, now we have more and more digital services uh, and they keep uh, getting better. Um, in these middle-sized cities, uh, but also in, in smaller ones uh, and, and bigger. Um, they are more comprehensive, um, they optimize the city's operation and bring measure, measurable uh, benefits um, of digital change. Uh, but uh, I think that um, there is definitely a lot more to do uh, in, this, in this field, uh, like a strategic and uh, holistic approach to digital transformation and the digital city strategy. So digital transformation is not an ad hoc activity, but a systematic work uh, in, uh, in uh, some kind of ecosystem. Uh, Process-based approach to system uh, implementation and, and wider use of, uh, of data and data-based decision making. So it's it's I think it's uh, we have a, a lot uh, work to do uh, in this manner. And documenting and widely communicating about the benefits of digital transformation, um, but also constant impro improvement of digital competences and awareness. Uh, but uh, not only in. Uh, for uh, for uh, cities uh, managers and cities employees, but also um, through uh, city uh, city residents, and uh, I think um, we also should um, uh, change cooperation uh, between city departments and residents and improve the interoperability and uh, data. Uh, openness uh, to to make uh, more uh, innovation uh, and application for uh, for better quality of life of uh, of citizens of our cities. Thank you very much, uh, Przemek. I promise uh, uh, your next question. Uh, so, uh, what is the role 
all of uh, small companies, startups as yours, uh, in this process of digital transformation? Is it um, uh, digital transformation into smart city only chance for big companies, big tech companies, or maybe in this process there is a place for uh, startups, for small um, you know, Polish companies to find some uh, some some um, some place on the market and help. Uh, one hand uh, of local authorities in this process, and second hand to build um, a strong uh, um, uh, business. Well, I will start saying that I hope that one day our small startup will be big. So, um, <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, the thing is that, of course, there's a space for the big companies and there's a space for, for small projects. With a project like our, like, what is our place? We brought like completely different attitudes to to the problem, and uh, and um, uh, as due to the nature of the project and nature of the startups itself, we've been able to implement it very quickly. So I can tell you just the the first idea for the project was in 2019, and the project get life after years. So and after 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 two years of of the first meeting of the funders, we have like quarter million kilograms of trash is collected worldwide so it means that uh, in in i guess that in bigger big corporation and the big firms it would take much longer but on the other hand the truth is that uh, the project like ours can grow or or can scale right so and uh, we, we will not do this scale without the big uh, corporate partners or, or the municipal partners or or the bigger i would say colleagues supporting us uh, because the thing, the, the most crucial things that we need is the users, and the users need to be aware of the platform. And on the other side, we need financing, and financing for the project comes from the companies. So, um, so, so I think that at the very early stage, we can we can address some problem, and uh, and but at the end, we need like the bigger colleagues to to to, to make the change. Can I add to that? Sure, sure. Okay. So I think that really foremost, the transformation in cities is an opportunity for small companies. Whenever I see, and, and we have the experience around the globe working with cities, whenever they gather around the platform, there is a vibrant ecosystem that starts to grow. So we have really independent, like in London, independent builders, they are startups, they are partners. This is really something that builds around those platforms and specifically in the city cycles, this can also then grow because of a global cloud platform and get exported. So there is also an economic transformation aspects for cities and their ability to then export those capabilities globally and reach a, a, a broader audience. I think absolutely to your point. And yes, will you agree that um, this transformation could be a chance for Polish companies uh, in this area and uh, maybe how government can help uh, these Polish companies to uh, start a business in uh, area of smart building smart cities around big business. I have heard for so many times that maybe the government should just stay out of the business and that would help the companies the most that I will not propose any new ideas of the government getting into small business. We have a lot of big business, big businesses, state-owned businesses, and we, I think it would be reasonable to stick to that. Uh, but, uh, but back to your question, I think that uh, during our discussion, we, we, it has shown that uh, uh, the small, uh, the smaller uh, entity has the idea, uh, and uh, and it's made possible by AWS, which is a platform that can make the idea accessible. First of all, easily replicated, and second of all, uh, I'm not hundred percent sure on that, but I assume that's the truth. Uh, easier and cheaper to build because you have you have ready components and you just have building blocks like with uh, like with Lego, and you build and the services is ready. And you can you can add all sorts of layers uh, to that. And I, I have seen, um, for instance, for, I have seen some uh, services that AWS uh, makes available for its uh, for, for its partners. For instance, you have a service that can um, provide you with a satellite image of any given part of which is under the coverage of this, and you just say where. 
what are the what's the SLA to get that delivered, how many you want, and you have a price on that, and you just get it done. And I mean, imagine, for instance, if you would want to check uh, check the, the the spaces that have been cleaned up, and you would have to buy access to satellite imaging. That's you know, two years you develop the company, and then two years to have the satellite. And with a platform like AWS, you just go online, you just click, and it's there. So, I think that it's it's a good it's a good thing for the small companies because it's uh, the time from idea to to business is, is shorter, and maybe and maybe you, you don't need as many expenses res expensive resources such as, for instance, engineers work to make it happen. Because uh, this, so this this is a very this is a very good thing and I, as you said what your company is doing you can explain it in one sentence and it's very obvious we we get we get places cleaned up because there's a, a very clear uh, incentive to do it that's that's the end and uh, I have to say I don't think that cities have to have to understand the cloud I don't think they don't I don't think anyone cares about that. Because it's not the problem of the local government, whether it's cloud or it's physical infrastructure. Nobody cares about that. And one, one thing which is bad about the cloud actually is that the cloud has a, uh, has a financial model, which is totally opposite to what the well, local government, but also many companies, I, I think, uh, have. Because the local government, uh, from time to time, it has some uh, money for capital expenditure. And under operational expenses, like in any company, you go to your boss and you say, I want to increase the OPEX. He says, oh, okay, come back tomorrow. Maybe you'll have a better idea. And from time to time, you come to him and you have you know, 15 slides and PowerPoint. He says, okay, so let's invest $100 million. He says, oh, that's awesome. We're going to do it. It's the same in the local government. So the cloud uh, is, the, cl the, the promise of the cloud is, that you're, you're not gonna have to spend the hundred million dollars because somebody has spent it already, but you're gonna have to pay. And the better the service, the more popular, the more you pay. So it's totally around, uh, it's, it's totally uh, not good for the local government, which is why I believe that cloud-based smart city solutions will be good only in the cases where you can prove that they will save money because th that's an easy trade-off. So you, you, come to, you come to the local government to say, okay, you pay 100 today, you're going to pay 50, and you don't really care why you pay 50. You just pay 50, and that's 50 for me. I can spend it on something else. Uh, and so, so I think that there, there is much work to be done uh, on, on the, uh, for, for the cloud companies to find a financing model in which you can actually capex the OPEX uh, Yes, uh, because you have all these EU funds uh, projects, and this is how a lot of IT gets done in the whole of public administration. You have this European project and you have, I'm very rich today, but when it ends, I'm very, very poor. And it's a totally different way than uh, the cloud is financed. So uh, I, I think that there's, there's much work to be done on, the, on, on that side as well. So, so, so I think that the small projects where you have the idea and you have to turn the idea very quickly into, into business or, or, or well, material, something material and uh, money saving projects. These are the two types of projects that will be sustainable in the cloud. And for the bigger projects in the current model, I don't think so. Maybe for very rich cities like London, but in Poland, I don't think so. Thank you very much. Uh, final three questions uh, to our guest. First, um, to Dariusz. Uh, we agreed that uh, awareness is one of the biggest break in the process of digital transformation of Polish uh, cities. In your opinion, how can we fight with, uh, with this problem? Uh, is it only uh, a question about education and knowledge, or maybe we can use another uh, solutions uh, in this way? Mm -hmm. uh, this point was raised here uh, during our discussion about building awareness. I, I a bit uh, extend on that. Uh, I must say that uh, 
the most important and uh, factor, the weakest, uh, the weakest link in the security chain uh, is uh, the human factor, as we know that. And of course, we can um, raise uh, awareness and education about security on both levels. For uh, smart citizens, I can say, uh, the residents, uh, how to use their intelligent products uh, in a secure way. I mean, uh, to be aware of uh, uh, about threats and loopholes in devices and how to avoid uh, uh, risky situations when you use. And uh, the other level is uh, how, to, um, how to say, uh, how to tell developers uh, how to, uh, to um, develop their products to be secured. And for instance, here in our laboratory, uh, we've been uh, running um, trainings for developers for many years now. And uh, I must say that we uh, teach them how to uh, build their products uh, according to stringent security criteria, how to uh, work out um, security documentation, how to test these devices, how to make uh, analysis of uh, their vulnerabilities. And what does it mean for these developers? Uh, I know that from experience, because they, uh, they told me so, that in that way, they are more, more aware how to introduce and implement security by design code of practice in their envi development environments. And this is very important because in that way, we can uh, provide components, for instance, of clouds, uh, like workstations, PCs, and servers, uh, which were verified, tested by third party, like this uh, security laboratory we uh, set up uh, in Katowice, as I said, uh, in the Ukasiewicz Research Network Institute of AMAC. So it's a very important factor to build this awareness on two levels for uh, smart citizens, smart cities, and uh, developers. Thank you very much. And uh, the final question uh, to you, maybe first to Isabella. Uh, if we, right now, will got a golden fish, and uh, we can only have a one wish about smart city, what would be? Uh, we need more money. Uh, we have too much or too less regulation or bad regulation. Uh, we have no, uh, not enough uh, knowledge or maybe something else what, uh, in your opinion, we need to uh, uh, build a real uh, smart cities uh, in Poland, how to uh, speed up this digital transformation of, um, uh, of cities. What we need? I think that, that one thing that we definitely will need is a shift into the infrastructure um, to make sure that the aging infrastructure is going to become smart. Once we have done that, the whole speed, um, it, the whole um, smart city movement is going to very much speed up. So it's, it's first of all digitizing this, making sure that there is connectivity, that there is broadband, that there is 5G everywhere. And from there, taking that from there, um, those projects can arise small or big in, 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 in different areas and in collaboration between the, the citizens, the communities, startups and, and big tech. So we need more money for investments in this area. Yes, definitely for, for, for the communication and for the, for the connectivity part, yes. Okay, Janusz, what, what you would wish this golden fish? Um, I would wish that there were more uh, ideas uh, that were uh, that were easy to present to the people, to the decision makers, and I, I believe that this is the way that uh, would uh, do the most good for the smart cities because I think, of course, well, infrastructure. It has to be improved in many areas. It has to be improved significantly. Uh, of course, you know, money for everything, it's always important. But I think it's always uh, the ideas because you look on local governments all over Poland. And I think that every, every local leader has some kind of idea which he finds the money, he finds, he finds the resources, he finds the way to do it you, you you have to you go and talk to these people every one of them will tell you that okay so i'm really interested in that and you just ask them the question so what's the most interesting thing you did in the last 12 months 
everybody has one and their eyes light up and they say, okay, I did this, 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 and it's really awesome. And you should look here, here, here. Everyone has, has uh, something like that. And more ideas, the bigger the, the chance that a larger percentage of these local leaders when talking about this idea, we'll be talking about something related to smart cities. Great. Uh, Darius, what would you wish to this golden fish uh, in around your specialty? Uh, money for investment, maybe another regulations, knowledge uh, or something else? Not money, frankly. Uh, we have enough money to, to run our business. <laughs> it's and, uh, the most important factor is a human factor. I must repeat it. Uh, why? Because we, we, uh, we need uh, more experts, uh, security experts, and on the market, uh, we have lack of them. So this is very important. Knowledge, once again, knowledge and uh, experienced uh, uh, geeks, we can say, IT geeks, uh, to help us to, to find loopholes, vulnerabilities, and then try to, to, to uh, counter threat them. So this is my my wish. Okay, golden fish. <laughs> Thank you, Shimon. Uh, I will not say anything new. I think the uh, we need uh, money, but smart money in the hand of conscious, wise uh, local governments and uh, their employees, uh, which operate in in, in ecosystem, uh, and um, they. Sh should be able to identify needs uh, and to be, um, have some kind of determination to uh, to have new ideas and to implement uh, innovative solution. I think that's all. It's money, it's not uh, uh, the panacea. Uh, we have uh, wise and, and smart people. Thank you. And Przemek? Yeah, I would just add that from, from my perspective, I would just wish to have like open-minded citizens that uh, are open and keen on to be the part of the smart city revolution because without citizens, it won't happen. So even with the infrastructure, we have to convince the citizens to be sure that they want to be the part of this revolution. Thanks. So summarize, we need uh, more money for investments, uh, more ideas, uh, more people who will be ready to realize these ideas into the li real life. Uh, smart money smart people so uh, it's uh, it's it's done and uh, uh, smart citizens yeah who will be ready to use these technologies which uh, smart uh, uh, politicians will into the real life in smart uh, cities <laughs> so that's great <laughs> I wish that uh, in next uh, one, two, maybe three years, uh, we'll meet and uh, uh, decide that uh, all our wishes uh, become true and uh, we will live in a real smart cities uh, in, in Poland, not in global, uh, global world. Thank you very much.